Okay, so in order to build your very own Grobot, you're going to need some parts. The brains of the bot, so to speak, is a good old-fashioned Raspberry Pi 2. I guess the threes are out now. I think they're form factor compatible, so go ahead and use that. Um, but this is the two, and it is a powerhouse of in its own right, so ta-da. But in order to do the sensing and controlling that we want to do, we're going to need a Fidgets 888 from fidgets.com, and that's this guy right here. Now, in order to power these things, this guy, the Fidgets board, takes 12 volts while the Raspberry Pi takes 5.3, the USB voltage, right? So, in order to just use one power brick for our Grobot, we're going to use a little step down here. Now this guy takes 12 volts on one end and puts out 5.3 on the other. Now, unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi has a micro USB power supply jack there. So we need one of these guys, which is basically a do-it-yourself USB micro jack. And we only really need this piece. The rest of this, unfortunately, is just plastic detritus, which we will not use. So the problem arises in that this guy ships with a three pin connector with two wires sticking into it and this is a micro USB um, and so we're gonna need to chop off the end of this and solder these wires onto this guy right here so fortunately I've already done that and this is what it looks like if you're not good at soldering like me it doesn't need to look pretty but those wires need to be separate and they need to be attached to pins one and five look it up all right uh, the other thing about this is in order to fit into the case the wires have to be angled in the opposite direction that you would traditionally expect from a jack so this goes right into our raspberry pi like this oh upside down it is there we go and it just slides right in there right And now the other end of this goes into our Fidgets 888. It's got little terminals here, and you see they're even marked ground and plus, so we know red goes on the outer side and black goes on the inner side. And we're just going to tighten it up like that. In order to power this beast, we need a special power supply. This guy right here puts out the amps right there 5 amps 12 volts it's got a pleasant green light when it's plugged in so let's go ahead and plug it in before we do that let's get ourselves an ethernet connection And, of course, our Raspberry Pi needs to have an operating system and some software on there. We've installed the power strip software from newbound.com. And you can get the image file from them. You can get the jar file because it's a Java app. Or they'll actually send you one of these if you ask them nicely and send them, I think it's 30 bucks. So, plug this in there. All right. And now it's time to fire it up and see if it works. So, 
So once you've found your device on the network, fire up in a web browser, fire up that address, colon, 5773 slash bot manager slash setup.html. That'll put you right up into the setup wizard. Uh, you might need to log in, uh, pass the default username and password are admin and admin. Um, and the first time you run this, it will ask you for your registration code, which you should have gotten when you purchased the software. So uh, click begin setup. Um, it tells you what it's going to do. And then it does it. Asks you some questions. Tell it what you want your username and password to be. What you want to name the device. Right. It ste steps you through all the stuff. Right. And tells you all about connecting to other devices over the Newbound network. It suggests some if it finds them in your local area network. Uh, access codes. Uh, you can read all about that if you like. I like to share the entire file system. That way I have access to it remotely if I should ever need to for any reason. Um, and then some stuff about the email. Newbound network email system is uh, out also outside the scope of today's talk, but um, you should read up on that too. In any case, once you click through all that, you're ready to go. Now launch up your PowerStrip app. Oh, if there's app, if there's updates available, go to your app store. There'll be a button that says update all. Go ahead and click that and make sure you're current. It's a good idea to stay current with the stuff because they're always adding cool new stuff. Uh, so fire up your PowerStrip. Now if you plug in your fidgets 888 here, if you plug that into your Raspberry Pi, like so, now you should be able to detect the fidget 888 on your local network. So we'll go ahead and add that. And there we have our beautiful Fidget 888. Now you can add, you can add new timer rules and that sort of thing. You can also do some uh, some Java programming if you're into that, uh, and tap into the various events that these that uh, this device kicks off. And uh, also you can add new commands um, that these that the device supports. The Fidget's interface kit supports a certain number of commands built in. You can look up their API uh, online um, and so you can send all of those commands to it uh, over the HTTP JSON web services interface. You can look up the entire API at newbound.com um, and uh, happy hacking. So back to assembly. So now that we've verified that our primary electronics, our two circuit boards here work, and we verified that the software is, is set up, registered, and turned on, and configured, and whatnot. It's time to take a look at some of the uh, 3D printed parts. So we're going to start with some of the with the rest of our uh, hardware here, if you will. Um, we're going to take care of the smaller ones first. Uh, because they're the most fragile. So let's snap this together into its little case here. And you may have to jiggle it around. I find it easier to put these things together with the, the cables attached to them so you can easily position them by way of moving the cable around. That looks like it's in there pretty good. Okay, and we're just going to repeat that with all of the other sensors. This is for the light sensor. And then 
finally, the motion sensor. I say finally, we also have the temper temperature and humidity sensor to do as well. Everything just snaps together, easy peasy construction. And once you get past that soldering, the rest of this is not that bad. All right, and our sensors are done. Now let's take a look at the housing for our primary circuit boards here. Similarly to the smaller components, they all just snap into place here. So I'm going to disconnect our devices here momentarily so that they are easier to manipulate. But I'm going to leave these two connected. So I'm just going to drop this board right in there into the indentations that it has for it. You can see that there's indentations that are Raspberry Pi shaped. And the Raspberry Pi drops into those indentations rather nicely. So on top of this, we have another 3D printed part here. And this just holds the Raspberry Pi in place. Really very little in the way of fasteners like screws and bolts and stuff like that in this guy. Uh, it's primarily a snap together endeavor here. So you'll notice there are holes here on the bottom here and there are pegs on the rack that I just put in there and you need to press each of the pegs down into the respective holes. So now that we've gotten that rack in place, we're going to uh, we're going to do a couple of things here. First, we're going to attach our camera. The blue side of the camera needs to be facing towards the USB ports here. Um, and there's a little connector. Uh, you pop out the bracket there, and then you just drop this in there. And you push the connector down flush and tight. And it should secure the camera ribbon nicely. So there you go. Now, once you've done that, um, you're going to need to do some, uh, some maneuvering here with the ribbon. You're going to need to bend it twice so that it's facing the right direction when it comes out the back of this unit. See, you just fold it once and then fold it again in a nice little tight triangle like that. And you want to avoid dragging your fidgets 888 around by the power cord. So once you've done that, uh, there's a little shortcut that I like to do. I take the cables off of the light and the motion sensor here. Um, and I'm going to drop these in here so that they stay nice and tight and out of out of out of reach because uh, these don't really need to be that long. I suppose you could just use shorter ones, but I mean they come with the come with the thing. I'd rather uh, throw them away. So anyway, uh, I fold these in here uh, on top of the Raspberry Pi. Um, and uh, and behind the, uh, the the rack that is on top of the Raspberry Pi, so I just uh, drop both of these in here so that these uh, the the connector ends come out uh, over the the end of the back here. 
And so I'll do that again with this other one here. All right, so now we have the bottom layer of our unit complete. It's time to start putting the finishing touches on it. So we're going to take this first, this second rack here. With the first rack was holding the uh, the Raspberry Pi together. This one is going to hold our fidgets 888 in place. So now the rack just snaps right onto the base like that. It should be as tight as you can get it. There's going to be a gap, but you know, what you going to do? All right, so now you take your fidgets 888 and you drop it right into the fidgets 888 sized hole. Now, once that's all together, let's bring this in closer here. We can put the finishing touches on our device. Now, we're going to take, because of the temperature and humidity, go into slots one and two of our sensor array here. We're going to take one of these for our lights and then the one of the other ones here for our motion. And we're going to plug those into uh, slots two and three, technically. Uh, slots two and three because they start at zero. So we've got the first two, zero and one, are open. That's where temperature and humidity go into. And then we've got one each here uh, for light and motion. So we're going to go ahead and connect our temperature and humidity probes as well. I'm going to ditch the zip ties at this time. And the temperature is the one on the top here, so that goes into slot zero. And humidity is the other one, and it goes into slot one. just need to put the final cover on. So I'm going to position some of the wires here so that they work within the context <laughs> of the space that we have remaining. And just drop that on there. So once again, everything just snaps together, and you push it down, and you're good to go. So now we have our base unit here, and all of the remaining components, once again, just snap into place. So we've got our motion detector over here light detector over here and those just snap into place as well and now we just need to wire these well you can pull on the wires a little bit and you actually got to cross the wires if you wire them in the configuration that I did, but 
you gotta keep track of which one's in slot uh, two and which one's in slot three. Once again, they start at zero, so three and four to normal folks, I guess. Now, and there you have it, our fully assembled unit. It's beautiful, isn't it? it even comes with its own rack. The rack also just snaps together. Snap that on there. The end also snaps into place. See that there. So that just snaps into place there. And then so the rack pivots. And the whole thing just drops right into the holder like that. And it mounts on your wall. And then you can, you know, this also has holes where you can mount it wherever you like. It stre actually stretches out quite far uh, from from the unit. You want it to get an accurate temperature reading so you don't want it to be, because this thing throws off a little bit of heat. You don't want to put a thermometer and a humidity sensor right next to something that throws off even as little heat as this thing does. You want an accurate reading, right? So there you have it. How to build a grow bot in what was that? three, maybe four easy steps, right? Look at that. Look at that.